What's going on guys and thanks again for being here. Today I feel very special to be one of the very few to put hands on something like this here. I'm reviewing for you guys today the Godox No LED M600D. This is a 600 watt daylight LED. And not only I have the light and all, I also have the barn door and also the Fresnel. So I'm gonna tell you everything that you need to know about this light, including some demonstration of the other accessories here. So stay tuned, don't go anywhere, I'll be right back. And the same old deal, Godox sent me these lights for me to test it out. I don't get paid to say anything here, and this video is not sponsored by Godox, and all my words and opinions are my own. So before I even start with this review here, I'm gonna show you guys right away this light in action, which I received the light on Friday, and then on a Sunday, I was actually having the opportunity to take this light on set, which I'm so excited to actually share this with you guys, because I'm actually going to be shooting a movie by the end of June 2022. It's a horror movie, and uh, one of the persons that I'm actually dealing directly with is Paul Sutt, based in Burbank, California. Right now, he's in New Jersey, so he's the uh, director of this movie, which he also specializes in special effects and he also made props for even Lady Gaga and he also directed movies such as the uh, Chucky you know it's one of those uh, horror movies and also the Watchmen so this is actually a very exciting thing to me here which I'm probably gonna be sleeping probably three four hours a day but the thing is lights like this here are very required on set like this because a lot of times we're gonna be shooting through uh, you know very bright backgrounds such as a uh, window or some panels or anything because as you know you cannot deliver anything to a producer a director, something that the background is like washed out, that is screams unprofessional and also amateur. So two days after I received this light, I got a call from them. I'm supposed to be shooting an interview kind of thing there, talking about the movie, which the movie's name is Blood Hunter, Thirst and Rage. And guess what? The actual room and angle that they chose there, there's a big bright window behind the subject. And this is when this light comes to play because you need a lot of power to actually compensate with the, uh, the whole lighting and everything. So everything was perfect. I had the opportunity to actually test this light the way it was supposed to be tested with something, you know, bright in the background or whatever, something that is a lot of power. So there I actually took the other two accessories that Godox sent to me, which is the uh, Fresnel and the barn door. So once upon arriving the set there, they wanted two kind of looks. For the writer, they want a more like, you know, dark or woody kind of, you know, warm kind of room and everything. And I actually delivered to them. So again, there was a very bright window in the background. So for this particular take, I actually used the M600D with the an actual soft box. And for Paul, which is another room and location, we used the uh, m 6 100D for the barn doors there because they were very big so to cut the uh, light over there so I actually used everything. In my 20 plus years of filmmaking I've never been so excited about a series. So I put the Fresnel here the barn door and for the other take again I just use a, a soft box here so this light actually did everything more that I wanted because there are even more situations that you probably require two or three of these lights for example if you ever use an RE M18 HMI which is a $15,000 light which you need at least three of these lights to actually compete with the M18 and a $1,500 price tag when you actually buy three of those doing the math is a lot less expensive than an M18 of course if you can actually afford something like that having one light instead of three to do the same thing good for you so at my office here i also did other tests with the slide to show you guys some other examples how you can actually use the slide with the other accessories that you can actually purchase separate with the slide such as the fresnel lens and everything so the first test that i did in my studio was actually going upstairs and by the patio door which was daylight outside in which of course you're supposed to expose the background first and then that's when you actually add the lighting same way on the other interview that I showed you before, you notice that the lights are not too bright because in cinematography you're supposed to actually light a scene without looking like it's being lit, not obvious. So, you know, you're supposed to use the lights. For example, if you have a lamp right here, you're supposed to shine a little uh, warm light right here, but not too strong, just to simulate the practicals, giving the audience the illusion that the actual light is actually coming from the actual practical, or, or if you say a lamp. This is what the purpose is. But most cases, again, whether you are completely outdoors doors or indoors if you have a bright background exposed for that first and then you add lights so what I did here was actually have the light shooting this way with the uh, proper intensity enough intensity to actually expose both the background and actually me The 
The second test that I did was actually this time using the Fresnel lens at full spot. So I was still sitting in the same place and location. So what happened is I was right here and the light was behind me a full spot traveling the beam to the actual white reflector and bouncing the light back, which was a big source of light which delivers soft light. And this is the reason why Hollywood uses like, you know, big massive lights such as the Ari M18. I wish I could afford this light. Being able to actually set these lights outside with a huge white surface, which again brings you very nice and beautiful soft light inside the room. Let's say a room full of actors and the camera is like, you know, going all over the place. How are you going to set up light and there's no space? So usually they're going to be placing these lights outside and as much power as they can possibly get to actually bring the light inside the room. And let's not forget, this is actually a 600 watt light, which means most homes, the uh, circuit breaker is the uh, usual 10 amp, it's not a 15 amp. So if you plug more than three of these lights in the same circuit, you're going to trip a breaker. But if you are a corporate building or a doctor's office or whatever, they usually have a 15 amp outlet in which you can actually plug in more lights. And you know, it's usually a higher amperage than a regular home outlet. 
When I opened the cardboard box and I removed this case, I immediately fell in love with this thing here. And would you look at this case? Everybody that I've ever seen open this case, they say, wow. You know, and this case is actually bulletproof. But besides that, look at what's the uh, interior here. And I love these things here. So as you see, everything inside here is all crammed back together here. If I was going to be renting this, which I definitely would not, but even if I did, people would probably have a hard time actually putting this back here, such as the ballast, which can go only one way. As you can see, the, the corners here, it only goes one way. Everything is so well secured in here that I actually put this case vertically and nothing falls or moves out of this case. And as you can see here, the supplied Godox Velcros here, which is something that I really appreciate. It Velcros everywhere, so there's no way this power cords and the cable here is it's gonna move to actually even touch the ballast right there. So this is the actual cable that powers the light and the Velcro secures it pretty good there. And here's the power cord, again, very secure here, so this will never hit this thing. And as you can see how meticulous I am with my equipment, there's not even a speck of dust in here. Another thing that I really like what they did here, the actual V-mount holder is right under here. So everything is separate. And not only you can actually mount this on a stand or any pipe, this also features an adapter here in which you can actually mount on a desk or anything like a flat surface. One thing that I want to bring up here is because every single person that's reviewed this light here, they complain that this is actually wobbly, so the ballast is going to be wobbling all over the place. That's because when you actually receive this from Godox, this particular adapter here, as you can see, there's an opening here. It goes right here where the screw is. Make sure you remove this. So right now, as you can see, it does not wobble at all whatsoever. So remove this piece, otherwise it's gonna do this. So take this off and no wobbling. And when you put this back in the case, make sure you do exactly what you see here, otherwise things are not gonna fit well. Make sure this is facing this way. This might sound a little silly how to remove the actual light, but I'm gonna show you anyway. It might make sense to some of you guys. First, you remove this here. And then to grab this thing properly, just make sure you grab from here and also lift from the uh, the thing here. And then you twist it around, the light comes out like this. To put it back, make sure it is inserted at this angle right here. And then you do this. And make sure this is actually facing this way. And also, as you notice, no more that little baby pin kind of thing. This is actually a junior pin here. Just remove this screw right here and it becomes a very large mount for your combo stands right here. And here's the actual reflector. Make sure you do not throw this piece away because this prevents the light from actually scratching the actual reflector or causing any damage to it. And here's the ballast, the best way to remove it. Don't grab it from here, grab it from here, from the edge right here. This thing is absolutely gorgeous. Look at this thing. And this ballast also features a little padding on the bottom, which you can set on the table, or you can actually use this or the actual V-mount mount right here. And everything here is removable, including this part right here. You can actually take this whole thing out of the case and leave the whole thing bare bone. It also comes included with this as well, 3 8 and a quarter inch. And here's the manner that nobody reads. There are actually very important information here in which I'm going to be covering the videos regarding the ballast. And here's a little message from my crew because I don't like lazy people on my set. There's nothing wrong with lifting a couple pounds, so do not roll this case. And when you buy the FLS 10 Fresnel, it also comes with the same gorgeous bulletproof case. And here's what it looks inside. It has a little disc, which is also removable to protect the glass, which is the same exact shape right here. And of course, I use Aperture products. I think they are fantastic. You know, of course, you get what you pay for, but also with the God Docs, you're also getting what you're paying for. Even though the price difference is not that far between the 600D and the God Docs M600D. For example, if you don't need the ballast that actually charges your V-mount batteries while you plug this thing on the AC, you know, it's one of those little minor things like that. I think the M600D is going to be a much better choice for you. And both the Aperture and Godox, especially the M600D, the light accuracy is pretty much spot on. The only thing that needs a tiny correction is a 0.6 green correction on that light. And when you purchase your M600D, let's not forget that the Fresnel and the bar doors, they are separate purchases. They do not come included with the light. Now the light comes with the case, the Fresnel comes with the case. Why wouldn't this come with the case? Don't know, but check this out. I'm actually the best to find a case for absolutely everything. I don't care what it is. Check this out. How precise am I talking about? Check this out. You have your barn door with the case. Come with everything that you need here. And there you go. Here's the top of the ballast. This is your DMX in and out. And here's where you connect the light to. 
And as you can see, this plug is very nice and robust, including the gauge of the cable itself. And this holder here, as you can see, can easily be moved out of the way. To turn on the ballast, you power it on for one second. And as you know, you can actually dial your intensity here, not only 1%, but one tenth of a percent. And this knob feels very precise and very nice to touch and to use here. To turn the fan on or off, you don't need to go through any menus. You just press this button right here. Fan is on, fan off. To access the effects, simply turn on the light and press this button right here. And you have all the effects right here. To select the mode here, simply press this button. Now you can actually dial version number one, two, and three, back to one, press it again. Now you access your intensity here. There are currently four effects. First the paparazzi, then the lightning, bed bulb, and the TV. I don't really care about the effects, but if I was gonna use such effects, I would actually probably use the lightning. But what I wanted to see here, which is missing, is the ability to either have a, some sort of a trigger button here, so this thing doesn't fire every one second or every five seconds, or at least you have something to do a countdown here. So with this ballast here or this light, all you can do is to uh, have the option one, two, and three with different types of things here, but that's pretty much it. To get out of the effects, press this button again, you're back to the normal lighting. Here's the menu. So I'm gonna go as quickly as I can here. Here's your wireless option in which you can actually control with via the Godox RCA6, which is sold separately, or you can actually control via the app. To get out of here, press the menu again. Next will be the Bluetooth, press it on. In case you need to reset the Bluetooth, press this button here and you can actually reset the uh, light right here. Press the menu again. I don't use DMX, so I'm gonna skip this, but I just wanna show what it is, wireless on or off. Press the menu again. But for more settings, you can definitely go here. So press this button here. You have the off, low, high, and auto. If you're shooting outside, especially hot days, I highly recommend that you have this unit set to high because it's gonna save you life on your LEDs. Now, if you're shooting interview, all you have to do is to press this button here. The light fan is off. And even if you ran this light at 25%, it is actually brighter than the Godox FV150. And just so you know, this menu quits if you don't do nothing for about a few seconds. There you go. So you have to go back to the menu. But the good thing is you don't have to scroll down again here, up or down. It's already where the last setting was. So click again on the fan and there you go. Next setting is the uh, dimmer. So you have your regular linear. This stuff I don't really care about, but you know, for some people this is important. So you have the linear, exponential, S-curve and the logarithm here. So press the menu again. Next one is the screen brightness. And here's the language, which you have the options for English and Chinese. If you rent this equipment, make sure you set to Chinese just for fun. So when the device is offline, it's gonna say in Chinese, uh, which means the device is offline. Next one is the reset. I'm definitely not doing this. And the uh, software upgrade. On the side of the balance, we have a USB port here, but keep in mind that there's no power coming out of this USB jack here, so you can't really uh, hook up anything here if you plan to power a device of some sort here. And that's pretty much it for the menu. Press it again, goes back to the normal lighting. Also, very important, when you actually power this light, if you're actually using this light for a long time, you're gonna see a warning here. So do not unplug anything from the outlet, let the message go away, which takes about four and a half minutes to disappear. Especially if you let people borrow this equipment or even if you rent this equipment, make sure they know this, otherwise you're going to have some damage with the uh, cob chip right here or some damage on the ballast as well. So again, I can't stress this enough, make sure the display shows black when you actually shut off the uh, light with the power button here. If there's a message here, do not disconnect anything. Before you install any V-mount batteries here, you have to make sure that you first unplug the uh, power cord because what happens is since the V-mount batteries, you lose uh, brightness or intensity with this light. If you do not unplug the power cord, what happens is the battery is going to have to be rebooted to actually work properly. So to avoid that, make sure you unplug the power cord and then you actually attach your V-mount batteries. Just like the Aperture 600D, you can also run this ballast utilizing only a single V-mount battery. Keep in mind that the uh, brightness is going to be reduced to 20% maximum. To install the second V-mount battery, highly recommend that you power off the unit. When you install the two V-mount batteries with the fan off, don't forget that you have a limitation of 25%. When you turn the fan back on, it can go as high as 40%. Every time you tap on this button, the line momentarily goes to zero, which is a very convenient feature, and then back to whatever percentage that you left here. And you also have a battery indicator right here, as you can see. 
Using a single 26 volt V-mount battery, you can actually run this ballast up to 20% of brightness. And when you have two 26 V-mount batteries, this ballast can be ran at 60% brightness. There is also a 48 volt inlet in case you have a battery system that can provide such power. Now let's talk about this Fresnel lens here. This is the Godox FLS 10. They also make the FLS 8, but keep in mind that this is not a proper reflector to go with the slides here because it is a smaller modifier. So the heat buildup here is going to be ridiculous. It's also in the menu. Do not use the uh, FLS 8 for a 600 watt light. That's uh, more for the VL300 or VL150, something like that, but not for this light. Now this is actually made of glass here. This is not plastic and it's quite heavy and very sturdy. And speaking of durability here, I was actually taking a B-roll. Guess what happened? I put this thing on a turntable and I went over there to press record and I stayed there. And then this thing started to roll and pick up speed. I couldn't reach on time to actually get. So guess what happened? I had a table right here. That table is at least four feet high and I actually watched painfully this thing fall on the ground and bounce and it did not break. I actually spent half an hour making sure nothing was broken here, pointing this thing towards the start box to watch all the metal pins that actually uh, make this possible here for you to do this here. So nothing broke at all. I was so lucky, but this thing actually did fall four feet high and I actually had footage over here. So I must warn you, this is actually might be too graphic to show on YouTube, but I'm gonna post the uh, video clip anyway, so you can see with your own eyes what happened to this thing here. So I'm warning you, this content is actually graphic. So nothing was broken, the front glass element perfect, and everything here is perfect, inside and outside. Now another thing that people will probably ask here, especially when you actually do a full spot, for example, right? And if you put the uh, modifier this way or that way, as you press it down here, you see nothing moves. It's not gonna actually collapse on its own like this uh, lens here, the uh, 24 to 105 Canon. As soon as you point the camera this way, the uh, thing's gonna zoom in, you know, zoom out, I forgot, but the lens kind of... This is not gonna happen here. So whether you have the uh, Fresnel this way here or this way, nothing happens. And then if you set it this way here, same exact thing. It's not gonna be uh, expanding by its own. So again, the actual material in the front here is glass, but everything here is made of plastic, but it feels like metal and it is very heavy. So it seems like it's gonna last for a long time, as long as you don't let it fall on the ground because I was really lucky this thing did not break because I have carpet here, but still four feet high fall, something's gonna break, but I was so lucky it did not break. But I'm so picky here because after the fall, I had a tiny little scratch here. So every time I remove this thing out of the case, I make sure I look at the scratch be sad about it and then put it back on the light. The FLS 10 Fresnel, you can actually go from full flood from 35 degrees to a full spot 10 degrees and it projects about 46,400 looks at 3 meters away, which is about 9 times the intensity of this light with the bare bulb. The FLS 10 Fresnel is actually very affordable, you're talking here $199 and it does a very good job when you actually put the barn doors here to actually cut and shape the light, but it is not a razor sharp kind of a, you know, light cutting on the wall over there. And people tell the uh, nail light Fresnels, they actually are sharper than this one here. I'm not sure how much they cost and I don't have one here, but all the YouTubers, they're saying the uh, nail light uh, Fresnel actually is sharper than this here. But this actually does a good job for what I need. I don't have that particular Fresnel here, but if that's the case, I can just buy one and put it in front of the slide here because apparently these things, they're not that expensive. And here's the actual barn door. Everything is made of metal and I love the paint job that they did this. You can actually hear the texture of the thing here. And when you open the doors, nothing droops. If it does, just you know, tighten real quick here. You're gonna use a little tool on the other side for the uh, little nut here, and then also a uh, hex tool on the other side here, and you're good to go. But for right now, as you can see, the doors, they stay in place. And over here, you have the actual openings here, as we expect with a professional barn door, so you can actually have more coverage when you actually cut or shape your light here. And on the back, this is actually made of plastic to actually ease up on the weight. And it also features this safety thing here, which is also removable. 
So as you can see, this thing is huge as expected a professional bar doors should be, but it could be huger because if the doors were wide enough, even wider than this, you would actually have the ability to cut the entire, like, you know, streak of light right there. So you're always going to have uh, the uh, shape from the uh, barn doors here at the edges there. So make sure you actually uh, have the lights placed like wide enough so you can actually have enough coverage when you actually have a very tiny uh, a little amount of light on the wall there. So whether you're deciding between purchasing this light or the Aperture 600X or 600D, which the price is about four or $500 difference. So if you actually don't need the ballast that has the capability of charging your V-mount batteries and other, other small things, you might want to consider this light here because as far as light accuracy with the other people uh, who has a Seconic color spectrometer reviewing this light here, they actually claim this light is actually spot on with their own meetings, nothing to do with the manufacturing standards. The only thing that you have to do with this light as soon as you unbox it for being a brand new light this is actually a little bit on the magenta side which is a correction green of 0.6 and as you guys know over time this light will tend to go greener and greener but right now when you unbox this is going to be about 0.6 Correction. So if you're looking for more power, such as a 600 watt light, and you want to consider the Godox M600D versus spending the actual four, five, six hundred dollars with the aperture light, I think you're gonna be pretty happy with this light. But if that's not the case, in the United States at least, when you buy something, especially from a reputable source such as B&H, you don't like the light, you have a receipt within 30 days, you return the light. But I don't think that's gonna be the case because you're actually gonna be very happy with this light because I am pretty happy with this. And again, it's a risk-free, no fear. You don't like it, send it back. So let's talk about fan noise here. I think for a 600 watt light, this fan is actually rather quiet because you know every light has a fan noise and for 600 watts, you definitely need a fan running here. And if you're actually buying a 600 watt light or a 1200 watt light, I don't think you're gonna be worried about fan noise because these lights, they are for other purposes and they're usually gonna be far away from the set. Now, if you're shooting in a quiet place, especially a small room, can be a doctor office or a studio or at your home, why would you actually bring a 600 watt with a salt box three feet away from here, that doesn't make any sense. You can definitely use a little ML60 Godox or a VL150, FV150 or a 100 watt light, but if this is the only light that you actually brought on set, no problem, you actually silence the noise here and the light can actually give you 25%, which is actually the same brightness as a VL150 or FV150. So I am in a very quiet place, the fan is off and the only thing that's on here is the microphone. So I'm gonna actually turn on the fan, I'm gonna show you guys here and don't forget this light is on the wrong place right now, it's supposed to be on the back where the soft box is for the proper uh, sound, right? Because the light is in front of me with a very directional and sensitive microphone. So right now in post-production, I have the compressor turned off. So all you hear is the actual noise from the light, no automatic gain compensation of any kind. So I'm gonna show you the fan here. I'm gonna give you a few seconds. And this is the fan from the ballast, it's not the fan from the light. And again, you can actually kill the fan, so no worries there. If you are in a place here with the uh, lights close to you, just kill the fan, and this is a 600 watt light. There's plenty of power for you to do whatever interview they want. Now, when you actually have the fan too low, you can only crank this up to 50%. When you set the fan to high or auto, you can actually go all the way to 100%. And I have a wall over here, 10, 12 feet away, and look how much light is actually bouncing back. That's absolutely insane. And don't forget that you can actually temporarily kill the light completely and press this button back here. It gives you the same percentage that you have. Here's the actual fan noise. The light actually just turned on. So let me uh, silence the fan here. As you can see, everything dies the way it's supposed to be. So you kill the fan here and there. You don't have to wait or anything. You want, to, you want the fan back on. Everything is back on here. The ballast fan and this light fan here. You press this thing, both. This fan and this fan, done, gone. But don't forget that you are back to 25% here. Another great thing here, as you can see, there's a built-in glass element right in front of the cob chip. So when you take this outdoors, bugs will not get into these LEDs and cause burns and stains on it. Now, speaking of the construction of the slide, everything is metal where it's supposed to be. So you have some plastic on the front here. 
and also this whole thing is here is made of metal including the top the sides and the bottom and the back here is also made of plastic but it actually doesn't feel cheap in any way shape or form it's actually very robust very thick and feels very nice to touch here on the top of the battery is actually made of plastic everything else here is made of metal and of course the v-mount battery terminals they are made of plastic because you're dealing with electricity so it's got to be plastic and over here it's got a handle which you can actually put it out of the way as you can see here and at the bottom of the battery actually has a uh, little feet so you can actually put this on a delicate surface without scratching the ballast or the actual surface and the cables both on the AC and the part that connects the light to the ballast here the actual connection is very sturdy and it looks like this cable here is not made of PVC I might be wrong and I'm not going to do the test here to see if that's gonna melt or not but it looks like it's the same type of cable that comes with my aperture 300d for example so in this case somebody actually accidentally let the wire go this way here on top of a hot light for example that cable is not going to melt because the PVC cables, like the ones they use for your computer, your, your desktop computer, and other lights, they actually definitely gonna melt. But this cable here, I'm guessing, it looks like it's not going to melt, or it's not going to melt completely. And this yoke here is made of 100% aluminum, very thick and very sturdy, and you can actually mount the heaviest modifiers that you can actually put in the front here. I don't think there's anything that this light cannot hold, because the Fresnel with the barn doors, that thing is extremely heavy. I also have a huge modifier here from Godox, the Godox QRP120, which is a 120 centimeter wide modifier, sort box. This is the Godox QRP120. This light has no problem whatsoever holding that type of modifier here. It doesn't sag, it doesn't droop. And also gonna show you guys here the intensity of this light. This thing is no joke. Another great thing if you notice here, as you can see the actual LED diodes, they are actually forward off this actual mount here, which means every modifier that you install on this light here, it's going to beautifully fill the entire interior of the softbox. Some of the lights that I've seen, which has the uh, cop chip kind of recess here, when you actually put the softbox, it's not going to cover the whole thing as this does right here. And another beautiful thing here, if you actually need to use this light as a bell bulb to actually spill some light in somewhere, actually look how even the background is being lit there's no hot spots at all which by the way this is actually at 0.3 percent and the yoke is nice and solid made of 100 percent aluminum very sturdy and what makes me happy here is because no more of their only uh, baby pin kind of connection here you can actually put this on the uh, combo stand which features a full junior pin size here so either one, you don't have to modify or disassemble anything. You simply remove the screw, it becomes a junior pin. If you want to put the screw back here, you can actually put this on a regular light stand. Speaking of regular light stand, this is not the type of light that you're going to have a cheap stand with this light uh, on top of the light stand because, you know, you're looking for trouble, right? Either got to be a C stand or if you want to buy a stand like this, if you have a stand like this, a B&H sells it. This is actually a normal light stand, but actually sturdy enough to hold this light. But, you know, you don't want to go cheap on a light stand it doesn't make sense you're paying 1500 bucks for this light why would you want to buy a 30 dollar stand right most people they bang the crap out of the equipment i don't do that so if you're picking like me you probably want to pay attention to the actual height of the stand here to keep the clearance from hitting the knobs here because i don't want to scratch my brand new ballast most people they don't care but i you know i care so if you are one of those people you notice the distance here which is good between the actual light and the knob here so i can actually go about 160 degrees here but watch this knob here as the ballast will definitely hit it right here so stop right there and stop right here when we actually mount the reflector you notice there's no wobbling whatsoever So I have a light meter here just to give an idea in f-stops. Right now I'm currently set to ISO 100, which is a pretty low ISO. And the only thing that's going to be changing here are the f-stops, which will give an idea. So just pay attention on the f-stop and ignore everything else. So I actually placed the M600D exactly one meter away from that projection screen right there. So at 0.1%, not 1%, 0.1%, I got a reading of f28. Now at 100% bare bulb, I got a reading of f11.3, which is technically 11.5 if you will. And 100% with the reflector, I got a reading of f22.8, which again is technically f32. And again, 100% with the Fresnel set to flood, I got a reading of f22.5. And 100% and with the Fresnel set to full spot, I got a reading of f45.2. 
Again, this was set with the ISO 100, not 400, not 800 or 1000, 100. So I got F45 with the Fresnel set to full spot. So if you actually change to ISO 50, you're going to still have F32. And if you want to go ISO 25, you're going to get F22. Now this reflector provides an insane amount of light output, but as you can see, it is a very hard, harsh hotspot in the center there. So this requires a little bit more engineering to do. But again, it will throw an insane amount of brightness everywhere they shine this reflector at. So right now, the Godox Light app, open the app, and then right here, and then on the top right, click Add. Here's the light right here. It's that simple. It's connecting. And there you go. Wait a couple seconds until this little bulb comes on. There you go. So let's go to CCT first. Of course, this doesn't matter because this is a daylight locked light, so it doesn't matter. So, you know, let's say 2500 to uh, 7400, doesn't matter. So you can actually control the actual intensity here from 0 to 1% increments all the way to a lot of light and then back to nothing here. And then you go to the effects here. Notice that not all of them is going to work. The RGB cycle, of course, doesn't work. So it's going to be as a flash, even if you click over here, as you can see. Then some effects do, some effects don't. Whatever it is they like, such as the uh, laser, lightning, broken bulb, TV. So here are the effects in your CCT control, and it's that simple. Just control the brightness, and that's it. Since this is a daylight only light, if you want to keep things really simple, this light will work with this optional remote, which is the Godox RCA6. And there you go, 0%, 1%, all the way to 100%. You can't do one tenth of a percent here, but as you can see, you can go all the way to 100% and also shut off the light. And if that wasn't enough, you can actually control the light using the app and the remote. So I'm pretty sure I actually covered everything that you should know about the slides, the Fresnel and the barn doors and all. But if I forgot to mention something here, my apologies, but I try my best to actually show you guys a complete review of this product. And regarding color accuracy, this light is spot on in color temperature. There are other YouTubers who have the uh, second color spectrometer and they also tell us that this light is actually pretty much spot on except the actual 0.6 uh, correction here, which again, the more you use the light, the more it's going to shift back towards the green. Right now, when you unbox this light, is actually a little bit of magenta. But besides that, I believe I covered everything here. And that's my review for the M600D. If you have any questions, please feel free to drop them down in the comment section. I respond to everything that I see there. And by the way, it's quite a little bit of work to make this video. So if you guys want to use my affiliate links from b and and Amazon, I appreciate it. It doesn't cost you anything extra. And I make a tiny little commission here to support the channel. So once again, thank you very much for being here. And I'll see you next time.